If you've been anywhere near Twitter or social media over the last 24 hours, hopefully you will have seen this absolutely beautiful piece of animation that was designed by Justin Lee of Gazelle Automations. It depicts the next generation, specifically from Best of Both Worlds Part 1, but it's been done in the style of the 1970s Star Trek animated series. Right, the description of this video has the link to this video in it. Right, so pause here and go and watch that, all right? Okay, I assume that you have now watched it and come back, wasn't it deadly? Justin was kind enough to sit down with us and discuss what went into putting this animation together. I asked him by the time that we spoke, you know, kind of like, was he expecting this to kind of go the way that it was? And had he seen a lot of the discourse about it? He said that, you know, he uploaded it and he went to bed and went off for a walk and woke up in the morning and then, oh my. First of all, hello. And so you've just taken over the internet. That's that's how uh -oh. I'm describing this. You have exploded all over Trek Twitter over the last however long with this amazing animation. Uh. Well, thank you. I didn't, I still haven't like read all the, it's funny cause like last night I finished it. Last night? Was it last night? And I uh, I was just like, I, <laughs> it was supposed to be like an April Fool's thing. Like I was just like, ah, oh, this would, and then it, it just kind of was like, oh, it's gonna still take me one more day to do it. I was kind of also doing it, it was my wife's birthday. She and I both love the animated series. She's away right now, and I thought I'd send it to her as like a, a silly birthday present. And it just took a few extra days. And so last night I finished it and I was like, all right, enough computer for me. And I went and I took a really long walk and I didn't check my phone or anything for like until this morning. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> surprising. Yeah. So and I, I was really hoping that um, Trek fans, you know, people who love the animated series, people who love um, Ray Ellis's music, people who love The Next Generation um, would enjoy this and get a kick out of it. I've read some of the comments right before I got on the phone with you and people um, on the phone, like from the 1970s. <laughs> um, I, and no, it was, really, it was really cool to see people like catching all the little details I put in because I was like, okay, you need to have, cer there are certain things about the animated series that make it the animated series. And so I'm glad that people have caught those things. One of the ones that stands out so quickly is it's when it's toward the end, the board cube is moving off and the Enterprise D is following it. And it's like you've got the scuffs in like it's the cell moving across. Yeah, that, yeah. That detail. I was like, that's the thing. And when you watch, you know, TAS on, on Netflix or on Blu-ray and you see all that stuff, the fingerprint smudges and the like the way I picture it is, you know, the animators and like the, you know, I don't know, a photographer that was taking on the rostrum camera and they putting the cells down and they were probably smoking a cigarette while they were doing it. I'm thinking oh, yeah. that there was like ash everywhere. And, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. There's all this dirt and stuff on the, the frame. So I uh, I definitely was thinking about all that stuff. I was like, how would, what would this look like if it was actually being done, you know, on the animation stand with some, you know, guy just smoking away, like ash going everywhere. <laughs> Obviously, Best of Both Worlds, amazing episode, but why specifically Best of Both Worlds? Did you, Is this just a scene that you think just lends itself so well to animation, or is this like a particular favorite of yours? Yeah, I I, I, um, I mean, everybody loves Best of Both Worlds. I guess that's kind of like the, the given, but I definitely was trying to think of, you know, I think what it was, this, this, this did evolve over time, is like my wife and I have been doing, this is so nerdy, but it's the right place to say it. We've been doing like a, Star Trek-a-thon by star date. So we started from TOS nice. and we're watching. So now we're Voyager DS9 back and forth. And I've already seen all of it. She has only seen where we've stopped or where we've gotten to so far, which I think we're like season four of DS9. So I keep telling her she's got so much cool stuff to look forward to, but we also watched the animated series as part of the chronology. And as, when we watched it, TAS is done so straight. It's like, mm. it's a serious story. You know, it's 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 done in earnest, but of course the animation style and those crazy close-ups of the faces and like every it just makes it so funny. So you've got this like two things, two levels are playing at the same time. And so we were thinking like what if you did take it's a scene from the next generation, like a really pivotal 
you know, iconic moment from TNG, but you did it like that. Like, what would that look like? What would that feel like? So we've been talking about this for probably for months. I kept saying Star Trek The Next Generation, the animated series, wouldn't this be funny? So I guess that's kind of why that scene, because it's like a really pivotal, you know, Picard is abducted. They're trying to get away from the Borg, but then you've got, you know, Riker doing that filmation run, which is just like, <laughs> it's like, again, like, I know this is like, this is thing that I was working on, but as I was like drawing the cells and sequencing it and then watching it back, I kept just laughing at it. Cause I was just like, this is so, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in the greatest, in the greatest way, I want to make it clear in the greatest possible okay. way. And I, and just, yeah, pairing, I started by doing the audio first and I, I paired that Ray Ellis music. Like I took the Ron Jones music off and then put the Ray Ellis music on. And I was already like, this is, I have to finish this. I was like, this is just too silly. How much of a job was there in pairing the audio with the music? Was it relatively simple or was it actually like, did you have to go and scrub music out of audio scenes? It was a bit of both. I was expecting, I mean, this was the first hurdle. I, I, I don't know why I thought of this as the first hurdle because like the animation took way longer. But the, the first hurdle was like, can I pull the Ron Jones music out um and by the way you know hats off to i read one comment that said this proves just how much heavy lifting the ron jones music does on the original episode and i was like yes absolutely yes but it came it came off relatively without too much um pain so i was i was like all right that's out of the way so we can keep going but it was like i thought i might have to like pull the surround um the surround tracks off the Blu-ray or something, but I didn't even end up doing that. And it was, uh, I was able to get the dialogue and the TNG sound effects, which I thought should stay there because that's in universe. It looks exactly like the filmation, like it's perfect as far as I can tell compared to filmation from the seventies. How involved was it? Is this you with pots of coffee and pencil and paper or how, how did you go about putting this together? See, I, I'm, I want to be careful about answering this because I don't want to break anybody's illusion. No, I mean, it, it's, it is digital. Like if we're talking about what it actually is, it's digital. But um, in the same way that um, another, I guess, significant work that uh, we've worked on is some um, Thunderbirds episodes uh, mm -hmm. that were made to look like the 60s. And that was something that we did with our colleagues in the UK. And that, that was for the anniversary of Thunderbirds. And the same thing happened as we were trying really hard to make it look like it was made in the 60s. So this we were obviously trying to make it look like it was animated in the 70s. So I definitely went about the workflow the same way. So it was still all drawn mostly by hand, but it was done with a tablet instead of doing it on a you know, pencil paper and then tracing it onto a cell. But it was all done digitally. And then of course, adding all those like I, I looked at um, episodes of TAS and saw that if there was like a background character moving, like all the foreground characters would jiggle because they had to take those front layers off to replace the back cell. So you do the same thing. So if Worf is in the background talking, Picard and Riker are kind of like jiggling around in the foreground because they would always, the registration would be a little bit off, so. But the funny thing is, I, I don't, I'm sure somebody's already caught this, maybe you've already caught this, is that if you, if you do play the TNG, scene or that sequence and this sequence next to each other they're timed exactly the same like you can watch them side by side because i didn't change the the dialogue timing so everything is this like paced out the same way so um and i i don't know if that was uh i don't know why i did that but that's how i did it inspired choice on the sort of pink borg love it i as soon as i was like i'm gonna do best of both worlds i was like the borg cube is pinky purpley like i was just like that's the tas pink uh, borg cube for sure and same thing with like the borg drones like i was like they'd have a kind of purple accent on them i was just like that's how they it just felt like that's what they would have done they seemed to love that i've heard like both stories that the art director was colorblind and also that it was not because of that but it was just it's, there's something about that kind of i even added a little like um pinky kick to the ceiling of the of the d bridge just because i was like it just needs a little you know it reminds me very much of the klingons from the animated series because yes, yeah yes. i was like it's, yes, it's kind of yes. like it's like they decided that villains in star trek universe in the animated universe for sure have a pink purple tinge and that's that is yep. now the rule the one thing that i love 
love so much that you added that I know was obviously not in Best of Both Worlds was thank you for putting a Kazinti on the bridge. So I know because of Lower Decks that there is Kazinti in Starfleet now. And I what I heard was in my head was like, um, there was an interview with Walter Koenig where he talked about writing The Infinite Vulcan. Mm-hmm. And he, he said the note that he kept getting from Gene Roddenberry was, you know, exploit the, the medium of animation. You're not exploiting the medium of animation. And he, of course, wanted to do that story about clones. And Roddenberry, as, as Walter Koenig says, wanted to do a story about like, talking asparagus or Brussels sprouts or something. So he kept having to like shove this other thing in. And I was like, okay, it can't all be humans and a, and a Klingon on the bridge of the Enterprise. There has to be a very, like something that would have been impossible for live action Trek to do at that time. So um, thank you for catching that. Um, the other Easter egg that I was very proud to put in, which I don't know if anyone's caught yet, is that the, um, the turbo lift is open. Did, has anyone caught? Oh, I have. Because <laughs> like I when the car is up in the background, because like on TAS, like ninety percent of the time, I'm sure that's not a fair percentage, but almost ninety percent of the time, the turbo lift door is open on the bridge because I guess when they were f- photographing the cells, someone kept forgetting to put the, the the door, the red little red door on on. So I guess they made the background piece so that they could animate the door opening if they had to, but they always forgot to put it on. So I was like, it's very important to me that when Picard stands up, when the Borg shows up, that the elevator in the background is open. I was just like, that, of course, would, somebody would have forgotten to put that on. That's what I thought, anyway. That, that, is, that is proper, and I'm going to say this with love, that is proper nerd levels of detail. That is, <laughs> yeah, you are in good company. That is perfect. You've been working on this for a long time, but this has technically been in the universe for like 24 hours. Uh, can we have more, please? Uh. I'm thinking like, I'm like, what do I, cause like, this was definitely not as with things that happened like this. I was just like, I would be delighted to watch this. And I hope that other fans would be delighted to watch this. And, and certainly my wife, I sent it to her. Um, she's in the UK right now. And she was like crying of laughter watching it. And I was like, this is, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. Like taking something that's so serious and iconic, which is still serious and iconic. And I'm hmm. sure people watch Best of Both Worlds. It'll still be, but, I was like, I was so glad. So yes, the answer is yes. I'm trying to think of like what, uh, what should be following next because I haven't space thought about it. nine deep. Um, space by the way, <laughs> yes, I like I love, I love deep space nine. My brother actually just got me this for uh, for my birthday. So oh, fantastic! I, I have it. That is a fantastic book. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I I um. I've, I've already, I'm already on your wavelength, Sean. I'm totally, yes. Like I have been a Thunderbirds fan since I was about, I was knee high to a grasshopper. And is that Thunderbird one, the command seat sitting behind you? Yes. And that is that cool. Was, that, that was like, we, um, so we've been doing work with um, two British companies, uh, Century 21 Films and Anderson Entertainment. And those are all, you know, all relating to Thunderbirds and the worlds of Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. And so we've actually, we've stuck puppets in that chair and we've had them, you know, doing stuff. So uh, it's, um, I'm glad to, to talk to a fellow fan of this stuff because in Canada, it's not a really big thing. But when we went to England to do that stuff, to, to shoot Thunderbirds, it was kind of shocking if you took the puppets outside and we went on like Good Morning, it's so called Good Morning Britain. But we were on these like daytime shows to like promote stuff and we'd bring the puppets and people went like berserk about them, which was so unexpected. Cause like here, if you took them outside, people wouldn't know what they were, but people our age, people younger, people older, everyone was like, oh my God, you know, it was like a, seeing a celebrity. So that was, um, it's, yeah. It's, thank you so much for making this and for sharing it with us. Um, this, this could have been something that you decided to keep private between yourselves, and I'm delighted you didn't. I'm delighted you shared it because it was, uh, it brought an absolute smile to my day, and I know to so many people's days today. Oh man, thanks, Sean. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, not at all. Not at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go there. Uh, we're gonna put the links to all of your uh, projects, your websites, your socials in the description. Um, cool. And just thank you so much again for taking the time to have a chat with me today. Oh. 
Thanks, John. This has been great. Yeah, live long and prosper. I'm going to do the thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Die hard, Tracky. You can do the live long and prosper. Die hard, Tracky. No, no more proof required. Go. Once more, Justin Lee, thank you so much, not only for sitting down and having a chat with us, but also for putting the time in and sharing this animation with us. This could have been something that stayed private. And in fact, you chose to share it with fandom. And we are so, so grateful for it. The only thing is, Justin, as I said to you, what's up next? Because I'm kind of hoping for a DS9, maybe a little bit of Sacrifice of Angels. You know, just a nice, easy job for you. Nice, easy job. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much to everyone to sit down and watch this video today. You are all awesome and wonderful. As I say, you can find the link to that video in the description of this video. You can get in touch with them on Twitter as well at gazelle underscore inc. You can, of course, get in touch with us at Trek Culture on Twitter. And you can find myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. You look after yourselves until I'm talking to you again. Live long and prosper. Enjoy the animation. Make it so.